model which can be readily integrated to their uh, mobile apps to assist uh, customers and users. So basically, when they are building their uh, World Food Program app, it will try to recover uh, your voice. Uh, it will try to analyze your voice into speech. Then so your task will stop here because we did. You are from the perspective of this uh, machine learning engineer or from the data science point. So you, you are only expected to, uh, your team only expected to convert this speech into text. So uh, your work, uh, your work will uh, completed after delivering this speech to text model to the World Food Program organization. So as I have said earlier, we are going to use this American Swahili data set and Basically, the main responsibility that, that you have is uh, to build a deep learning model which is capable of transcribing this speech into text. So, for uh, those two languages, we have a data set here, and the data set will, uh, this link will guide your links to the database repository, and it was uh, a GitHub link, a GitHub repository, and you will go there and download the data set which is needed for user and there are also other languages out there so you have to download the data which is in need for your business objective so uh, from the data description perspectives the data set contains an audio clips or audio files and also it, it, it contains the possible transcription for that specific audio. So the data set contains these things. And in order to process that for first processing, we need to have certain uh, data description for them. So at the end of this week, we are expected you to have, from the skill perspective, uh, we are expecting you to have a an experience in working with audio files as well as in text processing and also uh, your familiarity with these deep learning architectures there are many architectures out there so you can employ one of those architectures here so basically if you have a basic understanding about uh, one of those deep learning architectures uh, the one which expects at the end of this week and also model management stuff like building a mail catalog containing models, which are labels, and also training model versions. And ML of practice with DBC and CML and ML flow. Basically, from the, the skill perspective, you are expected to have these things. And from the knowledge perspective, like uh, you have a knowledge about this audio and text processing, uh, how to process those audios and text and uh, from deep learning methods like uh, be familiarized with this uh, TensorFlow, Keras, or Python tools and frameworks which allows you to employ this deep learning model, cyber parameter tuning, model comparison and selection, as well as uh, uh, experiment analysis, what you result about and what talks, how can you measure your model performance and all those things can be expected on the end of this week. And the other thing is from the communication perspective, uh, from your report writing, uh, we are expected to have a report which is organized Alex? well. Yes. Alex? Yes. Yeah. Um, it seems the, the the your your voice is kind of breaking. Can you move closer to the mic and then probably speak a little bit uh, louder so that it's not clear what they change. Please. Okay. 
So, can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you. It's just like it's kind of breaking up. So, but I think it's okay. We can hear her. So, just continue. So, if you can improve so, it, that would be great. But at least for me, it's audible. Okay, from the reporting perspective, uh, the one which expects at the end of this week, and a well organized report which can tell us the overall process of the ESP text transcription and your approach, your uh, methods usage, and even your technique selections. All those stuff should have to be included in the reporting part. Then for the competency, competency mapping, the same as usual, but uh, in this week, we are mainly focusing on the, for the business understanding perspective. Uh, we need almost a measurable contribution or a basic understanding about the uh, reasoning of this business context and thinking about the CO table analysis and matching the business need with the possible uh, our customers' interest and also. Data engineering part, we need a uh, full version of your uh, effort on the data engineering part because uh, just you are performing some, uh, some means of the exploratory data analysis on all your files. So you are going to check each and every audio in terms of uh, order, in terms of their uh, features and everything. So, more of uh, Emphasis or we need a major contribution here on the data engineering and data understanding part. Then, for the visualization part, if I need almost as most minor, you can say, major con uh, contribution for that. And from ethics perspective, we need your major contribution here data privacy, data security, ethical usage of data. Uh, if the data is biased or not, this, uh, this type of information or competencies will be measured. And from software engineering and uh, development perspective, we need to also a measurable contribution there. So you can uh, more uh, look at on the competency map which is needed in your. Uh, Wait for challenge and uh, the other and the main thing is the career thinking path or your ability to work with groups. So we have, uh, we have organized your groups for this talent, so you have to have a more major contribution or major competency on this uh, career thinking path, please collaborating with others in group working together making branch and other things are uh, expected from you at this point. And uh, the team is almost, as you know, and the uh, edits are nothing to change it. So you have to submit your intern name on 8 p.m. UTC at Wednesday. And you should have to submit your final submission on 8 p.m. UTC on Saturday, August 7th. So, the leaderboard description, so we have uh, 100, overall 100 points, then uh, 24 points for community growth and peer support, so those who are uh, getting uh, community back in uh, the past week will be almost, they know how to do it, so uh, we need to keep them in track as well as those who are not engaged in this community and peer support. We are we want to you to to engage in the peer support and on the community close perspective. So we have uh, a pure twenty points for that. And basically, those community uh, things can include this uh, number of messages in uh, non technical channels and on time presence of limit and also total number of mentions, total number of uh, messages, as well as uh, total number of games can be counts. So we are 
keeping an eye on those data. Uh, uh, we are tracking you every uh, uh, rocket chat activities as well. So we have 20 points for that and 30 points for presentation and report. So we should have to focus on basically how you can write this professional report in terms of uh, consistency as well as in terms of uh, its inclusiveness. So you should have to include all things which are required within the, the, the standard format. For example, if you can think of like how you can write professional way of uh, report writing, is your report should have to have certain uh, abstract, then it's, uh, it should have to have an introduction, then all your uh, report related uh, body will be included there. Then the last step is your conclusion or your recommendation for the, that company. Then based on your analysis, your company will take your recommendation because you are data driven. So they will take us that as an input and they will uh, go for further uh, uh, improvement on their app development stuff. And we have, uh, so your interim will include, uh, keep on your mind that presentation, uh, report writing uh, structure, but we have 15 points for your interim submissions, which is measured through this. You have to provide a survey on speech to, uh, speech to text deep learning architectures, so how they are working and uh, what uh, what uh, possible architectures are there. Then you should have to discuss on data formatting and reinforcing these uh, male spectrums and character representation, everything related to this speech recognition or speech uh, conversion task and discussion of those those functions, evaluation metrics and other key components related to your speech recognition uh, speech recognition or speak to text uh, conversion and discussion about ethics and bias and fairness about your the, the given data sets and uh, related to the language so we have 15 points for that overall report and uh, for the final submissions for final report submission we have almost 15 points similar to the internet and uh, you should have to provide uh, a PDF of a slide or a report or a blog entry submission, which is must. And also you should have to show an evidence to a publication or a submission of your report in blogs like Medium or LinkedIn or any other similar platforms. And uh, for your final submission, clarity of your message, uh, writing structure, which can, whether they are logically separated uh, uh, sections, and appropriate usage of graphs and uh, image, and professionalism in production values like free of uh, spelling errors and usage of the same fonts, uh, font size, and as well as well produced and well organized. Uh, report then discussion of ethics bias and fairness attempts to address uh, by your data uh, from the data ethics perspective for the given data set then uh, for the technical content we have 10 points so 20 points for the interim submissions so we should have to uh, Submit your uh, GitHub link, which is uh, uh, which contains almost similar pro with the previous weeks, and basically this uh, in this week you you should have to change the way uh, or your data set and your reprocessing stuff, EDA stuff. So you uh, have a Jupyter notebook that will visualize your data, and you'll have a well-written readme as well as uh, object one and a code which follows this object-oriented programming structure. 
and also your first impl implementation of the uh, deep learning architecture as well as it finds that demonstrate your teamworks and components simultaneously and your request history with CML modified message. So uh, this these uh, requirements are needed for your uh, interim submission. And for the final submission, we need the ML of setup, which can have almost 10 points. Uh, working with this this workflow implementation uh, with CML as well as screenshot of your CML report, a Git push code, and uh, GitHub link submissions with deep learning model implementation, uh, and the dashboard screenshots of the dashboard, and finally at the end of the day we need dashboard which can accept uh, your or voice, uh, your voice, and you can uh, transcribe that voice into text and deployed model or a video of deployed model in an action. So these are all needed for the final submission, and it is measured from 30 points. So for this week, similar to the past weeks, we have bytes. So Bytes for visualization, bytes for quality of code, bytes for innovative approach to analysis and writing and presentation, and bytes for support in the community. So we will award bytes for the top three in each uh, category. So I hope you will be one of the part for this one. And for work because you are going to deploy uh, your speech uh, to develop your speech uh, to fix net model in this net group so we have six groups here and uh, group one group four and group five will work on the strongly data set and group two group three and group six will work on set. so the grouping will consider your uh, model knowledge and um, language uh, knowledge, as well as your nationality and other uh, related uh, grouping techniques are used to group you in these six groups. Then apart from these group work, so, so you, as if we are we are asking you to work in, but we need your uh, individual GitHub uh, submission. So for each of the group, you will work on group, and you will have different branches, and you will have your own repository which can uh, tell us about uh, everything you have performed. So with Group, you can share the concepts, reference codes, and figures. Similar things. If you have a question with your, uh, with how it going, that will. And this interim uh, reports as well as final report by yourself, and those GitHub links should be uh, also individual and. Your screenshots are from your computer, and all group members should have uh, maybe they can have a similar code in their Git repository, but you should have to have at least one in your group and make a frequent commits of your Git repo. And bring pull requests as well as not. Branch and uh, is mandatory while you are working in group. And uh, the next is uh, for group contribution, you should have to uh, contribute equally or you should have to divide the tasks uh, within the groups and you can uh, contribute uh, to 
final output with the, uh, to your class. So let submission policies are there. So you can uh, see uh, we will uh, have uh, some sort of punishment for late submissions for uh, those who submit uh, one one up to three hour late they will receive um, persons uh, from the total possible grades and for those who submit uh, uh, greater than uh, like uh, greater than six hours or they may be uh, let uh, they may be receive these feedbacks, but it uh, will not be received for them. And for the final submission, um, we were expecting uh, late submissions from one to uh, 24 hours or one day. Uh, it will have a maximum of 50 percent. And uh, if it's beyond one day, it may you may receive. A feedback but may not get grades. Uh, and for leaderboard calculation for this week, we have a collective uh, of almost four weeks. So one of your lowest score will be uh, will not be considered in this week. And for week eight onwards, two of your uh, uh, lowest score will not be considered as uh, a score for your. Uh, for the leaderboard uh, building and uh, okay let us go to the instructions so can you hear me and any any description or any sort of question? I, I think the, Amale, just let's let's stop there and let's if anyone has a question because sometimes it's not about, I think they, they can read that, right? It's not reading through. It's about explaining what is really, what they don't understand. So let's try to see um, what people feel. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, in three, deployment is required. But can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, this week when I try to deploy a tensor flow model on Heroku, the build size gets more than 500 megabytes. So it doesn't uh, deploy. It is beyond the minimum requirement, yeah. the maximum possible. So how can we deploy a tensor flow model? Um, so there are, so is that because you have to install the tensor flow and that is just the size of the tensor flow that's the case yeah when i remove the tensor flow part it gets really small but when i add tensor flow it gets really big okay. so one way is that there is tensor flow light if you could check if we can use that one by reducing basically just the bit size um but otherwise what we are also asking is that if you have deployed it's like if you couldn't deploy you could just uh, take a video you interacting with the deployed model and um, and then upload the video so that's basically if there are if you have that kind of issues that's one solution here it will count similar it's like you just have to demonstrate that it's responding it's working um so it's kind of you you, you create a small video okay meaning on our local machine Yes, so it's like you deploy it in locally and you kind of then interact. But I think let's find as a community, let's find a solution. Hopefully this time, actually, we, uh, we're still thinking to provide you some um, Amazon resources where you can actually deploy it there. But uh, we still are figuring out how to distribute. But hopefully that will not be a problem. But if that is the case, like, you know, in the situations like that, you should be able to do just to record the video of the deployed model. Okay, can we do that for the last week's task? Because the students sure. join them. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Yeah, but um, uh, yeah, you can.
Toyin. So try to focus on, yeah, exactly, just the challenge for this week so that you understand, right? It's like it, that you really have a clarity. So, oh, Toyin? Hi. Um, Hi. Last week, I had issues with my DVC. I think I sent you a, I sent you a message on Rocket Charts. But I used uh, NG Drive as my remote, but I've yes. been unable to get the remote URL, make it work. When it gets the remote URL, it just like lists it as uh, defi with the file names. But for Google Drive, you know, it uses all these like numbers online. So I've not been able to change from that format, that URL format to the format uh, Google Drive uses. Mm. So has anyone used here Google Drive as their DVC remote and make it work? Blaze? Yes, I was able to do so. OK, so could you help uh, Toyin? Uh, could you guys get together and solve it? Yeah, sure. OK, great. So Toyin and Blaze just reach out to each other and then uh, address it. I know that I know Toyin, you told me that because of the size issue, whatever you might, you might not. Yeah, sorry that I didn't reply to that one. OK. okay. Thank you. Great. No worries. Um, who else has, like, so do you understand? So first of all, now the business needs and the context and uh, part, is it clear? So what is not clear? Because what we don't want after today is like almost always by Monday, given that we have a short time, by Monday afternoon, you probably should have a clarity on the overall process. So that means you should be able to write a work plan. What you need to do, what you will do, what you deliver, you know, you should probably basically will have like a, a calendar, you would say like, okay, I should be able to achieve this by, the, by then so that I can finish it on time. So do you have that clarity or to have that clarity, what do you need? So, or another way to put it is that from current week's one, what do you expect is the, the kind of the blockage or where you think you, you will have issues to understand? Okay, so if no one has anything to comment, then it, it seems like you're clear, you understand it. Yes, Sally. Go on. Oh. Um, okay. Uh, let me proceed. Uh, what I'm about to say is, can we have a trail? Can we use a trail app so we can just have a workflow, for example, by today we achieve this, and by then tomorrow achieving something this, like trail app. Yes, I, I think that is. I mean, we are not forcing you because they, we are giving you a lot of work, but this is really key that you find. Yeah. Like so train more, especially in a group. When you are working in a group, the most important part is to find systems like Trello, where you can assign and plan and, and use some kind of strategy, either Scrum or anything that you know, that you would basically follow everyone's task, what they have done, and synchronize. So I definitely recommend Trello. Um, uh, also for this program, so we can. Uh just so we have the same flow and also uh, for us to just i mean to reach out to each other yes so yeah i think plan it so what i want you to, so this is a you know it's a big group right so that means we have daily uh, meetup what is different from the rest of the weeks is that you will have a daily uh, catch up with the assigned tutor for you to report where you are not on like that means like the team each team has to, like each person has to in there, like for example, today, we expect you to later present us your plan, basically who's assigned where, right? So we want you to understand and to plan as a team, come together, plan as a team, assign people to do what, 
and have probably either Trello or Google Doc, whatever, Trello recommended or other things, Jira or anything that you have. And um, you kind of have assigned and clear what needs to be done. So you will present us with your plan, right? And then we give you feedback on that. Okay, and on the report part, can we have a time? So I feel like uh, uh, submitting dashboard report and also an MFO or DBC is just at the final submission is taking us time. So uh, not giving me more time to report especially. So, just so the entry, if you read it, uh, Mahalit, if you go to the either the like the leaderboard of the week so there are two places you should be much more concerned what we expect which is the leaderboard of the week is basically what is reflected in also in the submission right so don't do too uh, go down just understand what we expect right so like basically even if here we put them as points what is really important is not like you know it's not only the points but what we expect so for example in the entry we don't want in this case it's just only a work in progress draft it shouldn't be polished you know whatever it should just be like whatever showing that you are you are on the you know on the path so in this case what we really want is that you have at least read some papers that you should just give some kind of survey you know quick few paragraphs um and then again what basically what you manage to do is a formatting and the pre-processing aspect and then whatever like you understood about which loss function to use evaluation but this shouldn't be work this should just be even part of like when you when you are preparing it in in your jupyter notebook you should be able to write these things there and then copy them to a google document that should just be as simple as that for the entry because we we know that it's a lot of work and the entry what we really want is some kind of sign that you are on the path on the way to deliver it and and therefore so if you go down that's like the entry there is only these two and then so this is in the presentation if you go down you will have um also on the technical content so there what do we want so basically like your code of course whatever is the code and well written read me because the first day you set up you should just write it like what it is blah blah but it, it's, it's basically, you know, write something that is descriptive and you will build it across. Like when you build features, the readme will also probably build it, but just that. And then of course your Jupyter notebook. Again, here is what you just commit. And we are talking about the first implementation and we'll get back to you what is like, so we, you know, how this week and next week are gonna be. But no, so just can you not highlight the final, just only in the part which is on the like the entry. There is no the screenshot or whatever we want. It's just much more of what you did there, more than building anything. And then the final is where, of course, things that you deployed you need, right? So does that does that answer your salim? It's more like the entry. Yeah. Take it yeah. as more less uh work. Yeah, it's just my point was on the final submission uh, and uh -huh. then term as well, but on the final submission because I'm, I'm having a difficulty submitting my reports because I have to visualize it and also understand the whole thing and just express it in my own words. That's what I uh, Yeah, I but I mean, I think that is key, right? So that's the, unfortunately the basically the final submission. So the part is that we don't want screenshots if we can see it somewhere deployed but if we can't see it we of course need to know because we are clients for you that means like if we are in a team i am you know the tutors basically are the team lead and they need to know uh, so that they can report to their basically uh, superiors what what they have seen what is done the summary so you have to con communicate with them in a certain way and the report basically is just finally what you know whatever you do that's your portfolio that's where your job is guaranteed right it's like if you are if you if you don't write it in a blog or somewhere and just only do the work only it doesn't count to you like it's so we don't want that so we want you to actually put time reduce even whatever is necessary to to put time on the report so that you can put it out somewhere so that people can notice that you have been working I mean, the whole point, we, the whole point is that, that your work, whatever effort you put, 
must be shown to the world. Okay, thank you. So I see that same you don't uh, so maybe just read it within the group. So it's the again another very important part is that like this you have to get together in a group. When it's in a group, just reach them out. The people who are who cannot respond, yeah, it's like you know, go without them, maybe, and just maybe you have to tell them, like, uh, set up like a, I don't know, a rocket chat channel where you include everyone. But it's probably not your. I mean, if you can, that would be great to follow somebody just to follow up with them. But the most important part is that you don't have time, so you have to go with the people who respond, and everyone should just be responding, like kind of proactive. So in a way, I would say definitely some people might be sick and some people might might be whatever. Follow them up. I mean, this is really an important one. But if you just write them many times and they don't reply, just let Yati know so that Yati can follow. And it's probably not your part to just like, but inform somebody, either me, Abu Bakr, or Yati. But it's important to inform Yati because she's the community manager. And it's always like whenever you have like in your team, someone is not responding. Just let Yati know that okay, we are uh, we can't reach this person, um, and then she will follow up. So you just get in a group today and understand, brainstorm, have the questions that you don't understand, and then kind of try to um, list out the kind of tasks that you need to do and distribute them across the group. And always just work in a, in a as if like you're you're really in a company in a soft, as developing a software which means that you have to work with a very proper format, which is that everyone makes their branch. So there will be a master branch, and then from that master branch or the main branch, everybody branches and kind of works and submits every day or you know, regularly. Um, and then you kind of come up and, and talk. So you need to set up that one, but within a group, you have to distribute the tasks. Okay, uh, Nathanael is saying that, okay, he's in group six, so. So, okay, Mahalik, Nabiyu, yeah. Okay, can you explain a bit about the last points, the last two points in the interim submission? Okay. Same yeah. file, uh, especially okay. the last one is the same file, okay. I didn't understand. Okay, so this is the one which is git branch, right? And then pull requests. Yeah? Yes. So, so one part is that, of course, we want you just whenever, like, someone, for example, asks for a pull request to integrate a certain because they, you know, you break it down into pieces, your work. And they probably should finish it in a couple of hours, for example, after writing the code and you know doing something, and then they will check, they would do a pull request. So hopefully you already set up CML to run some kind of test, and whatever the, the, the test is running will kind of be the output will be in a CML um, message, right? So when you now accepting or reviewing the code to request, you will have that also attached from CML. What we are saying is that just then take a screenshot and, and put it you know in a in a certain folder where you will attach it later. So that's that's the part. And the git branch is basically saying, yeah, it's like we should be able to see more branch activities that you know you that reflects that you are working in a group as a team. Okay, thanks. Okay. So some main thing about the data. So you mean about just the type of data that you, you will have or you have? So that one I will highlight just you could uh, maybe then let's oh. let's finish about the the project and then are you, do you plan to give any detail on that? Like is there a tutorial on demonstrating the data and stuff? 
I didn't have, but just have a simple notebook where you can help them to put uh, yeah. those, those audio files. But yeah. uh, so, for now, so the, let the, me go yeah. to this one and I will. So the so, uh, similarly, the data is a training data. So that means actually, in uh, principle, let me explain you, it. Okay, just before that, uh, Malik. So the the data comes from a Git, some some form of Git. It, in principle, it should just be the link that you should have. It's like a training data somewhere collected, right? And so it sh it shouldn't be probably in yeah it exactly. Should be just from that package then then to you Mahalit. So the data repository is here and from here you can find uh, ASR folder which uh, is almost a collection of uh, the repo contains different language so for Amharic and Swahili, you can access the data set from here. And for as a general description for data set, uh, let us go to the Amharic one. And the data folder contains uh, training and test data. Then the training data sets, uh, which the one which uh, you are using to train your model, it contains the web file or the raw audio files here. Here are some, uh, there are a list of audio files are there. And for the transcription part, there is a txt file which says trans txt. And it contains uh, a transcription for each audio file. Yes, you can see that it has uh, a primary key like or a, a key which identifies uniquely each uh, audio files and uh, its possible transcriptions are there. So this is all, uh, this all is similar for uh, your test, test set as well. So you can have uh, this as a key to access the transcription for uh, the training data set on the first place or the one which is named as this one. So basically it contains this which is a training test and those folders contains the audio file. The only thing you need from this repo is to have your training test with uh, text file uh, your data you can you're breaking slightly a bit yeah. my it's just uh, I think your connection is slightly breaking um, so but is, is that clear to me so that basically means each of them are just audio and the transcription so each Point is just basically at one one row in a training. So one is the audio file, the other one is a uh, transcription of it. That's cool. The it's basically the feature is the audio, the label is the text, and you want to basically develop a model that for any other than if you speak, it should just give you the the text equivalent. So that's the data that you will use to train. Okay. So, okay. 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 Uh, okay. 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 For as a task one, you have uh, basic data for P processing or basic audio P processing, as well as text P processing. So you have you have this audio file and transcription. You will load them 
and you will go, go for conversion and any other uh, like converting them into from one channel to two channel to accept by the deep learning models and also uh, to standardize by sampling rates uh, you are using this uh, sampling techniques in order to in order to have uh, uh, this uh, audio signals in order to convert them into digital signal you would have to specify uh, them in certain uh, uh, into a certain sample which is uh, recorded and it will say you, your sample rate or your sampling frequency tells you the number of samples per uh, each second and it will chunks into uh, small uh, audio files per, per second so that will give you uh, a bit understanding about your own data rather than the the analog data, the analog data which is not maybe just by our uh, machines and this uh, standardized sampling rate or basically uh, when you are loading your data set for your uh, specific purpose you don't have uh, such sample rate fluctuation it was already stated in uh, uh, 16 uh, 16 kilohertz uh, a standard format, but you can resa resample it in, in whatever uh, uh, suitable or whatever sort of uh, sampling rate which makes your audio more uh, understandable by your uh, model in order to have a robust model. And also, you can resize the sample language to have these equal size audio files uh, by extending those durations because sometimes your audio duration may be uh, different in size. So there are a long sentence, there are short sentences, even there are people who are pronouncing those uh, who are reading slowly and who are reading fastly. So in order to compensate those things, you should have to extend your audio uh, or you should have to either truncate or part your audio files and um, the next is the data augmentation part which you can perform as a basic audio pre-processing uh, task so you are you will you will augment or uh, an audio augmentation uh, to apply by uh, this time shifting in order to get uh, to write uh, or to let in order to get a uh, better understanding of your audio data then the next step is filter extraction at this step you are already pre-processed your data and it was a well acceptable uh, state then you will start to extract some features from your data set so the, this feature extraction can be it can use these spectrograms or uh, spectrograms or male frequency capstra uh, or MC, MSTC, and these are uh, some some of the uh, feature extraction techniques for audio, or you can have more additional feature extraction techniques. So the augmented audio will be converted to this either the MSTC or med spectro, uh, spectrogram. Then the last phase for the processing is the uh, acoustic modeling, or uh, once you have extracted your features. You should have to have uh, to pass those vectors into your uh, acoustic model, or in order to process uh, your uh, to build your neural net, you should have to have a map between your uh, audio file and the transcription. So basically, our system doesn't understand our uh, raw texts. So we should have to convert them into numbers and those features are which, which are extracted from uh, the audio file should also be in, uh, in MKRA format. Then you will have the mapping between those two uh, features and levels. Then the acoustic modeling will uh, take this, uh, the signal probability and uh, it will attempt to map your audio signal into your uh, speech transcription or phonemes and 
at this stage you have finalized you have your input is ready for the deep learning model so you will start to write a deep learning models which can accept your input and which can train on either tensorflow or pytorch or keras and you can build on the top of that you text speech uh, a speech recognition model which can perform which can uh, transcribe a, a speech into text so basically here we have i have stated simply uh, a speech recognition model but if you want to make it complex you can add language model in order to have additional uh, knowledge on your uh, uh, from the text perspective but we don't ask you that for this one but just once you have picked up your architecture on your, uh, for the speech recognition part you will start to use this connectional uh, connection is temporal classification algorithm for training an inference purpose and this it takes the probability of your output and last hidden layer and drives to the correct character so the CTC will map your uh, last layer out of your RNN or CNN model and it uh, links with the correct sequence in your transcription. Then the next step is to evaluate your model. So the evaluation process will be uh, by using this word error rate for uh, audio uh, for speech recognition. We are using this. For data rates, so you are you are you are going to compare the predicted output and the target transcription word by word or character by character to figure out the number of difference between them. So there are so many examples you can refer, and so uh, you can show us uh, in, in the data. The effect of your data augmentation by applying different data augmentation techniques and versioning all of them with DBC and model space exploration using hyperparameter optimization, or you can use the different hyperparameter tuning uh, by changing your uh, developing parameters. So, in order to have a robust and better, best fit model for your. Uh, data set or for your case and after that you have a test unit which can test or run this CML and based on your public request they will uh, perform against the you can you can perform these uh, simple uh, CML lines which can take your models into the dimension uh, you can you can use uh, this model data or any uh, test uh, test units which will be included in your say as a ml part then the version of different models which you are using like uh, your hyper uh, you, you are using this hyperparameter tuning different uh, data augmentation techniques different feature extraction techniques so uh, training your model with those different things will may give you uh, what call it as uh, they have uh, an impact on your model's performance so you can show us that by flowing uh, by tracking the model using this ml flow and uh, evaluating the model using this uh, the word error metrics the last step is to serve your model on web interface you have to uh, to build the front end part either class or standard or your JavaScript, then you will have uh, you, you can link that uh, with your model and as your model, uh, your interface will record a voice, then it passes through the model and the model predicts the possible transcription, and that's the overall flow of your model serving process. So, after that, you will deploy in Heroku or whatever uh, serving or you in your local machine as well using the docker file or serving the model using this ml flow or packaging or uh, for the docker part or 
you can use uh, uh, local uh, ML flow packaging options model and testing. So you can uh, report all your findings. So you can include uh, why you should choose this specific model uh, method to process your data set, why you do this a specific method to extract features as well as uh, why you select certain deep learning architecture and compiling uh, of reports on of your performance. So things to the part and this week for from you and so uh, there are some details you can refer as well. So let me uh, know what's your uh, understanding about the overall flow of the work or the overall flow of this. Uh, description of tasks hello Can you hear me? Anybody have any questions? No, we can call the session. Yes, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to present my demo on how to, for you, how to start with this audio pre-processing part. Let's go to the...
Alex, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. It's kind of faint. Can you move closer to the mic, maybe? It's still is it's okay, but it's 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 faint, like you can barely hear what you're saying. If I am um, So basically, the main objective for our uh, business is to have a speech recognition uh, or a model which can transcribe the speech to text. So here we have two data sets. Uh, our speech recognition will expect. Uh, model will expect two things for us initial thing so the first one is the audio and the second one is the text file or the transcription file so the audio file in a wave format we have that and the transcription file which is a text file so i will do earlier so we have these two data sets as our input So, Python can provide us different audio processing libraries, manual ST file or PyTorch, PyTorch audio, or, uh, like the one which I'm using is LibroSA. So, uh, for just a simple demo, which can show you how can you load this audio data, how can you see some initial features from your data. I have used this library, uh, library for data creation purpose as well as for data display, to display you the data set. I have used the uh, IPython display or a math closely, uh, closely, closely function. And So uh, let us go down to the depth. 
so basically our audio are an analog uh, signals so they contain uh, wave like structures we are having so how can we decide or how can we convert these wave like structure into uh, the, uh, those waves in the one which is understandable by What about now? So, uh, make things easy. Let us make things like this. Uh, hello, can you hear me? Yes. So let us make like this. Uh, I just provide this. Uh, I, I will present this demo part for you tomorrow. Just to have uh, clear communication. But for today, uh, you can. Uh, for those who, are, who wants to, who are able to understand the thing, I have shared the note on the drive, and I will go through it more on the local session or on, on the tutor session. I think that will be better. If you have any question in the meanwhile, you can ask me. I think that's better. Uh, so let's have a meeting on tomorrow's session, and maybe we can have this. Uh, we will have uh, an introduction about uh, again as well the implementation part. How to start? I will show you how to start the speech recognition. So, uh, Walker, are you there? Yes. Uh, so, are, are we going to meet um, later today? Yes, we are going to meet uh, with the groups later today to listen to their audit, uh, progress about what they have understood from the challenge, the research paper that they have gathered, and then the plan of um, reading to help them design their own architecture to make the model, as well as any blockers that they uh, might face or they are currently experiencing. And uh, yeah, so that should be what's that's what we would be like expecting from them. If that's the moment we meet here. So let us wrap up this session at this point and we'll continue tomorrow.